Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to the show. I'm Dr. Dan here and thanks for joining us today on Doc Talk. We're gonna have a great show. We have a special guest, Dr. Randall Spare from Ashland Veterinary Center. He's gonna be here to talk about breeding soundness exams and how to take care of that yearling bull after you get him back to your place. It's gonna be a wealth of knowledge. He's a good friend, he's a good cattleman and a great veterinarian. Stay tuned. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do, every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. The state of Iowa and Iowa State University are proud to host the 2021 Beef Improvement Federation Annual Research Symposium and Convention. The convention will be located in downtown Des Moines with easy access to the airport, hotels, and local restaurants. Iowa State University is just north with its research and teaching farms. Join us in Iowa and experience how Iowa provides the beef industry with innovation to application. Closed captioning is brought to you by Profusion Drench for Beef Cattle, a no prescription, no needle supplement. To learn more, go to zenpro.com. Dr. Spare, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dan. Pleasure to be here. Folks, this is Dr. Randall Spare, who's a great veterinarian in Ashland, Kansas, but an even better friend. And it's my pleasure to have him drive up to spend time out of his busy schedule to, to meet with us today. He is the owner and operator of Ashland Veterinary Center, which is probably one of the most progressive cow-calf uh, ranch and feedlot practices in the United States. And, and thank you so much for being here and spending time with us. Dr. Spare, we're going to talk about breeding soundness exams, something that you do quite a few of and, and uh, something that you spend a lot of time honing your skills and working with your clients. That's right, Dan. We, we probably do in the neighborhood of about 2,000 yearling bulls every year and probably 1,000 to 1,500 herd bulls every year. So we have the opportunity to uh, see what works and what doesn't work and we want to put our producers in a, in a position to succeed. Well, when we talk about breeding soundness exams, kind of walk me through, you know, the components of the breeding soundness exam and, and, and what you're looking at when it comes to, to these bulls. First of all, Dan, it's, a, it's, it's not an exact science. We put some scientific information uh, together to make it as scientific as possible, but we still have to remember we're dealing with a biologic uh, animal and we're looking at a very specific part of his anatomy. And when we do a breeding exam, this exam is we're looking at what, what happened 60 days ago. But let me, let me back up even more important. Before we get uh, semen out of this bull, what we want to do is we, we get this animal in the chute. And we're looking before this animal gets in the chute to see does he move well, is he lame. We look at his feet when he comes in. We also watch him when he walks out, make sure that, that, that he is going to be able to do the job as far as getting the breeding. The Society for Therogenology has set forth a standard of whether a bull passes or fails on that particular day, and we measure their scrotum. On a yearling bull, he has to be at 30 centimeters. If he doesn't pass that, he fails uh, at that particular time. We may say, we, let's redo him in 
in a month or two months when he reaches when puberty makes, uh, increase the size of his scrotum. Also, then <clears throat> when we do massage him and get insert our probe and we're, we get a semen sample, we make sure that he has at least a fair motility. And that, here again, if he doesn't have what I call fair at least, or if, even if he is fair, I may do another jacklet. Once I have semen a sample that I'm going to be satisfied with motility, then we'll look, stain that semen and look to make sure that he has at least 70% normal sperm. Gotcha. Well, folks, it's obvious that there's a lot that goes into the breeding soundness exams. And as Dr. Sparrow said, that sample you get today was produced in the testy 60 days ago. So it's a snapshot in time. Let's take a break. Let's go to commercial. When we come back, we'll jump back into some of these things on the breeding soundness exams. We'll talk about yearling bulls, herd bulls. Dr. Randall Spare from Ashland. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment. Our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprevo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprevo. Zuprevo is a fast-acting, long-lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprevo for Merck Animal Health. The state of Iowa and Iowa State University are proud to host the 2021 Beef Improvement Federation Annual Research Symposium and Convention. The convention will be located in downtown Des Moines with easy access to the airport, hotels, and local restaurants. Iowa State University is just north with its research and teaching farms. Join us in Iowa and experience how Iowa provides the beef industry with innovation to application. Producers know stress costs money. It puts their cattle at greater risk of illness and can be a substantial drain on animal performance. That's why ZenPro developed ProFusion Drench for Beef Cattle. Formulated with ZenPro's patented trace mineral technology, ProFusion Drench is a no-script, no-needle performance supplement proven to rapidly replenish essential nutrients lost during times of stress. For optimal results, use ProFusion Drench with ZenPro Performance Minerals in feed as part of a complete nutrition program. To learn more, go to ZenPro.com. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Randall Spare, who's a veterinarian down in Ashland, Kansas, and he owns and operates Ashland Veterinary Center. Uh, Dr. Spare has, is known nationally and internationally for veterinary cow-calf and ranch, purebred breeding, uh, veterinary medicine. Very fortunate to have him as a Kansas State alumni and very fortunate to have you on the show. Let's talk about your yearling bulls because the, the, there are some difference in bulls, yearling bulls that you're going to sell and, and test in herd bulls when you're doing these breeding soundness exams. So kind of walk me through, at least start out on some of the things when it comes to these young bulls. First of all, Dan, it's, it's, we have to really put in common sense. When it comes down to, would I pass this bull, would I use him on my cows? Do I feel comfortable that he's going to go out and breed, breed those animals and we can put him with 20 20 cows but let's back up so why are we testing yearling bulls that's what the industry wants today 30 40 years ago when your dad was a veterinarian we used two-year-old bulls but nobody wants to wait to buy a two-year-old bull anymore we'll sell lots of bulls in this country that are between 12 and 18 months of age so that bull has just passed through puberty he may have some immature problems but first of all when they're when we're looking at that sperm <clears throat> spermogram we want to make sure that that he has enough normal sperm to breed 20 cows okay so so you're looking at at this yearling bull he's going to go out he's going to be able to cover 20 cows um and so the development then at a yearling he's he's not done growing he's not done done uh, fully being coming sexually mature uh, as as well. That's that's correct. So when we're doing a 
uh, a BSc exam, we're really careful not to say this bull fails today. Well, when you're kneeling beside a bull that can bring ten thousand dollars, and we say today he's done. No, today he may not pass this exam. We may put him to the side and re- retest him three, four months later. So it goes back to again, it's what you're testing today is really two months ago. That's right. And so if you have a, a bull that's in the chute that's that's eighteen months old, that's a sixteen. That's that's the sperm that was produced when he was sixteen months of age. And so delaying that then may just allow this this bull to to mature more and and develop more. That's right. For instance, Dan, remember that time in this this last December when it was minus 12 degrees for about three or four days? That's going to have effect on the spermogram of these bulls if those bulls were in a place where they couldn't get cover. They couldn't protect themselves. So we have to keep that in mind and say, we're going to retest this bull three, four times before a particular sale so that he either passes or fails. If he fails at that time and his testicles feel good, we're going to put him on the on the shelf and say, let's redo him in the middle of summer, particularly if he has a lot of value. That's some pretty expensive hamburger if we make the wrong decision. Absolutely. And we need to understand we're putting up someone's livelihood, both the buyer and the seller's livelihood at stake here if we make arbitrary decisions uh, very quickly. Yeah, I agree. And so, so let's take a break. Let's, let's, let's go to commercial. But when we come back, let's talk about some of the things when you're testing those herd bulls and, and some of the things that you're looking at. Something that's going to be very important for you all that are watching the show. We appreciate you watching Doc Talk. Again, Dr. Randall Spare, Ashland, Kansas. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. More after these messages. The state of Iowa and Iowa State University are proud to host the 2021 Beef Improvement Federation Annual Research Symposium and Convention. The convention will be located in downtown Des Moines with easy access to the airport, hotels, and local restaurants. Iowa State University is just north with its research and teaching farms. Join us in Iowa and experience how Iowa provides the beef industry with innovation to application. Teaching Farm is a place where producers, entrepreneurs, faculty, innovators, consumers, and most of all, our students have an opportunity to learn. We strive for excellence in the beef business and provide an environment for others to engage in production agriculture. Through teaching, advocacy, and hands-on instruction, we can grow the next generation of beef producers. State University Beef Teaching Farm. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Randall Spare. Dr. Spare is a bovine practitioner out of Ashland, Kansas, owns and operates Ashland Veterinary Center 
outstanding practitioner here in Kansas and, and the surrounding area of the country, as a matter of fact. We're talking about breeding soundness exams, Dr. Spare. And the one thing about the breeding soundness exams, you know, there's a difference between yearling bulls and, and herd bulls, and you do a lot of both. But let's touch on, on the herd bulls. And when we think about herd bulls, you know, when do you want people to come in and, and do that test? Well, it's really important, Dan, that they start planning ahead. If, if they're going to turn their bulls out May the 1st, and they know that, it's, and there's plenty of bull sales between uh, in uh, March and April, it's important to get their bulls tested prior to the day before they turn out. So just in case they have a bull or two that don't pass the fertility exam, they'll have time to go get one. Right. Yeah, and that's a, that's I think that's important. Is the first time, the most important time is at least before you turn them out, and the second one is if give yourself self time to to find a replacement. What about what about herd bulls? What are some of the things that when you're testing herd bulls that you're really focused on, or or things that you're focused on for your clients? Well, in a difference is in in the herd bulls, they they've been out, they've worked the previous year. And we're also, not only we're looking at feet and leg issues, we want to make sure they can uh, get around, but we're also looking to make sure that they can extend uh, and there, there's no prepucial injuries and constrictions. Sometimes those bulls are out the previous year and they've had a laceration of the prepuce and it's not seen, uh, nobody picked up on it in these large pastures. And so when we get ready to do a semen evaluation, if they cannot fully extend, then uh, it doesn't matter how good a sperm sample we have, Dan. Right, and and I thought you you made a good point too. You know, legs injuries, no wheels, no calves. Right, that's and, right. And getting around the pasture. So so looking at that, how many now when you're when you're looking at at herd bulls and and as they age, are there any differences as far as older bulls and younger bulls, or is it more just an individual bull? As far as the uh, sperm count, it uh, it's pretty much the same whether they're three year old or ten year old. There's times, and now with some confined feeding operations, there's bulls that are that can get around that I mouthed them, and they're ten years old. They don't have any teeth, but they're in good condition, and they don't have to travel very far because they're in a pen. Hugh Hefner. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so when we start to to think about that, and those are bulls, then you're going to collect or or you're going to bring the cows to them. That's right. Um, type of type of thing. But uh, you know, you said twenty cows for for a yearling bull. What are we looking at for for some of our herd bulls covering how many cows? You know, and I think that varies depending on the pastures. I have clients that that like to have one bull per twenty cows when they're covering when they have a cow per per forty acres. And uh, they put few more, few more cow or bulls in those pastures. There are most places use a bull per twenty five cows. Okay. Well, I think it's a good number, a uh, good number to remember. One of the things Doctor Spare does a lot of is is work with the post purchase uh, of of yearling bulls. And when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about some of his experiences in that. Thanks for watching, Doc. Talk. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do, every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. The state of Iowa and Iowa State University are proud to host the 2021 Beef Improvement Federation Annual Research Symposium and Convention. The convention will be located in downtown Des Moines with easy access to the airport, hotels, and local restaurants. Iowa State University is just north with its research and teaching farms. Join us in Iowa and experience how Iowa provides the beef industry with innovation to application. Producers know stress costs money. It puts their cattle at greater risk of illness and can be a substantial drain on animal performance. That's why ZenPro developed ProFusion Drench for Beef Cattle. 
Formulated with Zimpro's patented trace mineral technology, ProFusion Drench is a no-strip, no-needle performance supplement proven to rapidly replenish essential nutrients lost during times of stress. For optimal results, use ProFusion Drench with Zimpro Performance Minerals in feed as part of a complete nutrition program. To learn more, go to Zimpro.com. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Randall Spare. Dr. Spare is from Ashland, Kansas, owner and operator of Ashland Veterinary Center where he does a lot of work on purebred animals, does a lot of work in herds uh, in the region nationally. Uh, very well respected bovine practitioner. Wonderful to have you here on the show today. And we're talking about breeding soundness exams. So now we got the bulls tested, they're good, they're sold. And I know you deal a lot with, with helping people uh, keep these yearling bulls in good condition so that when they get home, they're going to be able to do what, what we intended them to do when we purchased them. You know, Dan, I think that's right. And where I have an opportunity to work with uh, some seed stock producers, I often get a call from them and says, Randall, can you call this individual in, in uh, Missouri or Arkansas that just purchased this bull? And he's got some questions on how to take care of them. And I think that one of the things that good seed stock producers will have a follow-up team. They'll have veterinarians that maybe call for them, and we, we look at that as part of our job. Dan, so I think it's important that when a producer gets this animal home, particularly his 12 to 18-month-old bull, they're still a, a young man. They're a youth. They're, they, they're getting their mature teeth. And when these producers say, uh, you know, this bull falls apart, well, Dan, they're just getting their, their first two incisors at 18 months of age. Right. So they're... They've also maybe raised in, in an arid environment like southwest Kansas. When we have drought, we don't have very many parasites. We send them to Arkansas. Maybe it's a good thing for let them be exposed to parasites and then reworm them after they've had, had that opportunity. Another consideration is, is what's, what's your anaplast situation in, in your area when you take these bulls where, uh, that haven't been raised in an anaplast environment. Yep. So be cognizant of what diseases you have that they didn't have before. Yeah, we have the obviously the normal testing with TB and brucellosis and things like that that you're handling before they get there. Tell them to work with you, work with their local veterinarian, have you and their local veterinarian work together to talk about what these bulls have had prior to getting there. Um, it gets down to, to communication and, and, and a general understanding of, of health. That's right, Dan. And just this week, I had a call from a veterinarian from Missouri that had, his client had purchased a bull from one of my clients, and we had a good dialogue. And uh, so we're building relationships all over the country. You bet. So what about, you mentioned parasite control, you, you mentioned anaplasmosis, um, anything that they need to do as far as feed? When they uh, get those young bulls home, remember, they're still growing, and I think it's important not to throw young bulls out with uh, a whole battery of, of age bulls and just say, well, you guys decide who's boss today. Because we know that those young guys that they've made tremendous investment are going to get the tar beat out of them. It's, very, it's a common sense thing. Bring them home, let them be by themselves, acclimate them to younger bulls, and then maybe even put them in pastures with young bulls. That's a great idea. It's a lot of great information. Um, thank you for spending time with us. Thanks for spending time with the viewers, folks. Dr. Randall Spare, just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to, to anything bovine. Thank you for watching Doc Talk. And if you want to know more about what we do here, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. Thanks for watching the show. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning is brought to you by ProFusion Drench for Beef Cattle, a no prescription, no needle supplement. To learn more, go to Zenpro.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply.